So, I, uh, thinking back on when I first met Tom, it was probably, my first symposium was 1970, maybe 1972, but the first thing that really popped into my mind was an encounter I had with him in 1976 at the ISIT in Ronneby, Sweden. And uh, I'd heard that there was a poker game going on one night. So I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. I thought I'd wander by and see, see if I'd get in the game. And I heard someone say that Tom was one of the participants. And uh, as Bob Gray had mentioned earlier, so it was a with a little trepidation that I went into the room and asked if I could get into the game. And it was a friendly game, and we're going along. And in those days, it's not like today where everybody plays the same game. What is it, Texas Hold'em or something like that? The individual players, when it was your turn to deal, you'd get to call the game. So when it came my turn to deal, I called a game called Aces, Jacks, and the Man with the Axe, and a pair of natural sevens. And I looked around the table, and I got these blank stares from everybody, everybody except Tom. Tom was so excited. Ah, that's a great game, he said. And he was so thrilled that somebody knew the game other than him. But it turns out, I guess it's a West Coast game, because I grew up on the West Coast like Tom. But, but then I learned a hard lesson. It was table stakes, and uh, so that meant that you could only bet against an opponent what he had on the table. So I had a pretty good hand coming along, and I was betting against Tom, and I had a very good hand. And I looked at his up cards, and I couldn't figure he was going to come even close to me. And I, so I kept, you know, he kept raising me. I said, well, he's just bluffing. He's trying to get me to drop out. So I'm going to stay in. And he raised me all the way up to what I had in the table, which was the limit. And uh, so we show the cards, and I win. I, okay, I, geez, I beat Tom Cobra. And then we go around a couple, few hands later, it comes up, same situation again. Now Tom, of course, pulls more money out of his pocket. So he's, he's still in the game, and we're going along again, and same situation, I've got another very good hand, and, and uh, Tom's betting against me, and I'm, okay, well, uh, I'm going to keep betting, he's not going to bluff me, didn't work last time. And sure enough, he calls, he, he bets everything I've got on the table, so it's a big pot, show the cards, I win again. I said, boy, this, I'm on a hot streak. So Tom pulls more money out of his pocket, and we keep playing, and a little bit later, same situation comes up again. This time I might not have had such a good hand, but I was a little cocky by that time. So we're betting back and forth, we're betting back and forth, and of course the, the story ends that he again bets everything I had on the table, which was quite a lot at that point, and he wins. So I walk out. It's either continue with taking my money to get home on the plane or walk out as one of the long list of losers to Tom Cover and Poker. <laughs> so uh, another story, he, he, something that hasn't been mentioned so far, he was a very good golfer. It's a tough game, golf. Now, I never actually played around with him, but, but he said he was a very good golfer. Right, Karen? He says he was a very good golfer. I, I believe it. He, he, he said he shot in the 80s. And I did have, I did have one uh, brief practice round with him, you might say. Sergio, do you remember? In Salvador? Yeah, he's shaking his head. So there was a little practice hole at the ITW in Salvador where it was maybe a 100-yard hole or something, and they had a few the high irons laying around there, and Sergio and Tom and I went out there, and there was, a, there was a nice green, and there was a little pond on one side and a little sand trap on the other side. So we each took our, our turns, and I would, I got up there and hit the ball in the pond, and Sergio got up there and hit the ball in the sand trap, and Tom got up there and hit the ball in the green. And this went on constantly after about 45 minutes, and then he wanted to bet, so that was time to, time to end it. The, the, uh, the only other thing I, I want to say is Tom, in a conversation I had with him just uh, in January or February at ITA, the last time I spoke with him, uh, he had been to every ISIT since 1966 
in Los Angeles. So that's what, 46 and a half years, I guess, because that was probably a January symposium. And uh, when I saw, so that's quite a record. I mean, he was dedicated. When I saw Karen the other night, at the uh, last night, just last night, at the reception, she said, Tom really loved this group. And, you know, we really love Tom, too. Thank you. <laughs>